Hi. Well, I've got I got a few parcels from um, from. I've had a few deliveries, and I I'm going to open them all on my own and have a look. But I thought, well, let's try an unhauling video and try opening it with you. So, first package. Now, I've been ordering a lot of books just recently ready for the um, Batod conference that's coming up. That's the British, British Association of Teachers of the Deaf. And I'm going to be leading a workshop at the conference on uh, representation of deafness and um, what good representation looks like in um, specifically thinking about the deaf world. So, the, um, books with deaf characters and deafness are going to be overrepresented here. But, so, the first book I've got here is I'm Deaf and That's Okay by Emma, Emily Bisbee. The title makes me go, oh dear, is it going to be really patronising? But I know from reading the review of it, it sounded really quite interesting um so it's focused on a child who wears hearing aids um mummy said that being deaf just means i can't hear very well thought timmy she also said that i have a special power that not everyone has i wear two hearing aids that give me sounds and have a, a fun party trick that not many people can do as well as me Lip reading. Um, interesting that lip reading, being good at lip reading really doesn't come automatically with um, with hearing, um, with deafness. But I do like the fact that it's using the term deaf, not he um, hearing impaired. Uh, we're really within the deaf, um, deaf education world we're really trying to push out the term um, hearing impaired because um, deaf t um, the because it it holds within it that impaired brokenness and deaf is is seen as a much more positive identity um, but. Um, the National Deaf Children's Society have been using the term deaf for all levels of hearing loss, including temporary hearing loss, um, for as long as I've been in the field, which is 20 years. Um, oh, so we've got a child with hearing aids. Um, he has a, a radio aid. Of course, we don't call them radio aids anymore. Now I call them assistive listening devices, but that's about the technology changes as well. Um, of course, he gets bullied and talks to his mum about it. Oh, and he explains it all to his friends. Now, interestingly, this poster about um, deafness isn't it it's not that dissimilar to a lot of the um work that myself and many teachers of the deaf around the country do with um young people to help them to make sense of and understand the deafness and to explain it to their peers um of course he shows off his superior lip reading which not all deaf people but yeah that's a really nice little positive story oh we've got some colouring pages I like that because um, obviously lots lots of the children I work with have fabulous hearing aids in beautiful colours and there's also a picture for your radio mic oh an octopus doesn't have ears or a cochlea. 
Instead, it has a special hearing aid called a statosis to help it hear. That's an interesting fact. I think I have to find out more about that. Oh, the author is, herself is um, deaf. Um, my name is Emily. I am deaf. I live at home with my parents, two younger sisters and a dog. The places you'll most likely find me when I'm not working as a care assistant is reading, writing and most recently painting. So, deaf, deaf voice. That's fabulous. Next one. Miller gets her super ears. So, the cover shows... Someone with a superhero with cochlear, a cochlear, no, two cochlear implants. I always like it when I see um, bilateral, that's two, two hearing aids. Oh, I like the illustration style. Ah, uh, so this is the story um, of the process of getting implants. Oh, good. So they've got they've got a teacher of the deaf in there. Now, a little bit focused on listen, listen, listen. Doesn't seem, which, actually, most children, you know, just because a child's given cochlear implants does not mean that they're going to be um, oral. Yeah, you know, that spoken language is going to be the main focus. Many, many um, cochlear implant users blend both signed and spoken language. Um, so, yeah, she. Cochlear implants help someone to hear when hearing aids can't help enough. Mm. Yeah, I think I said, um, yeah, this is definitely a nice little book about um, about getting cochlear implants. A little bit oral focused, but, but definitely represents uh, one pattern of experience. Yeah, I like that one. Right, next package, what have I got in here? Ooh, lovely hardback book. Our Tower by Joseph Coelho and Richard Johnson. So I bought this because uh, Joseph Coelho has just become Children's Laureate. Um, and I realised I really hadn't um, read anything by him. So I wanted to pick up something. And I just get the feeling, just looking at it, I'm really going to like it. So... We've got this very, our tower is grey, concrete and grey, boring, hard and grey. So we've got a, a very typical um, cityscape. And looking at the lives of quite interesting and diverse bunch of kids living in the flats. And then the connection with local nature. Oh, the, the art style in here is beautiful. This lovely picture of going down into a tunnel. Oh, I'm going to spend a little bit of more time with this, but it's really the link between the urban and the natural so some some interesting use of um of turning the book to get different perspectives and Finding the beauty in the tower block. Beautiful use of colour. 
from the really grey through to this lovely rich purpley colours with the green interwoven. Oh, real sense of community. Yeah, nice. That is rather beautiful and has that feel of real classic tail but with real diversity built in. Oh, I like that. Okay. Put the, paper, put the card for recycling. Okay. Last package. Mr. Mellow Likes Yellow. And we've got, actually quite nice, it's, it, this is not a book about being deaf, it's a book with a deaf character. A rather fabulous looking deaf character. Uh, this, these, I've actually got three books from the same publisher, um, Avid Language Resources, which are intended for use with, um, with deaf children to encourage um, an improved language. And the idea is that you get um, descriptions and then, um, then the picture. Now that's nice. Uh, he wears a hearing aid in his left ear and on the right a cochlear implant helps him hear. What a fabulous fellow. And it's very much a book looking at colours. Um, his bag is black, his kite is white, his bed is red. Oh, of course, he has a skink that is pink. Um, orange parrot. Oh, yeah, we've got some really fun illustrations. These are lovely. We've got a, quite a wide range of animals. Lots to talk about in here. Um... Yeah, I can see me using this book, particularly for looking at colours. And it's nice, it's got, um, it's not just your basic colours, it's also got, tur um, you've got yellow, black, white, red, turquoise, brown, purple, orange, green, grey, pink and blue. That's quite nice because I've always found turquoise is one of those colours which kids need a, a name for, but often... It is not presented in in early books. Okay, the next book, which is also from Avid Language Resources, is called Friends Together. My first thought on looking at that is there. Mm, I'm a bit meh about the illustration style, but we'll see. Um, however, one nice thing is that we've got a character beautifully illustrated with cochlear implants um, interesting use of the dyslexia font which isn't which actually I love it, um, it, all the letters are sort of stronger at the bottom ah so this is this is a book about feelings and talking about different feeling now this I can see me using regularly. Um, yeah, that I'm always looking for new things to use when talking about naming emotions and giving examples of emotions. I think the um, the pictures are very simple. Um, I'd like I'd be interested to see how children connect with them because. They're very simple, but that also means they're quite um, simple for children to process. But because they're not human faces, are they... Uh, particularly they haven't got eyebrows, which is interesting. 
I always think eyebrows are quite important for emotion. Um, that's why I dye mine dark. Um, oh, I've got some nice sort of... I can imagine this taking being useful across longer sessions. Hmm. I would say that is more a useful book than a beautiful book, but definitely a useful book. And here's the last one of the set, also from Avid Language Resources. Um, meets Ling Ling Bird. Despite his profound hearing loss, he's not sad and he's not cross. He wears magic ears that help him to hear. He's proud of his individuality and bright exuberant personality. I have mixed feelings about that because I don't think it's almost that message of are oh, you poor thing you're profoundly deaf and I don't think and that's not my why I don't I don't think it's useful um it's the same as when I talk to people about the work I do and they go oh poor kids like no no they're, they're amazing kids but then we have this fabulous beautiful character Ling Ling um the uh, chickadee with her cochlear implant and this is focusing on the Ling sounds which are um they're a, a set of six sounds intended to sort of represent across the speech spectrum so um in english m u r e sh and s um <clears throat> which is used as a very quick rough um way of checking that a child is hearing all those sounds um yeah i, I think i'll It's a little bit oh appalling um it, it's it looks like it's a conversation between the chick and the cockatiel about why um why they have cochlear implants Ooh, interesting but could you hear anything at all when you were really little before you got your magic ears asked chickadee Back then I lived in a silent, soundless state. Signing was the only way I could communicate. I could talk using sign language, but not with my voice. Some prefer it that way. It's a personal choice. Hmm. I... Yeah. I think this is this is quite a nice. I think this would be a really nice book to use, perhaps, with a child that um, has cochlear implants asking questions. Um, not one I would use with a whole class. I don't think. Mm. But so, so out of my little haul of six books. Mm. I think for beauty, this one just has, stands out. I think for usefulness and just for fun, Mr. Mello Likes Yellow is just lovely. Um, I can really see me using that one. Um, I can see, I don't think there's any of these books that I would say I would not use, but obviously I would use them with different children in different ways. So, yeah. I, I think Miller gets her super ears might be very nice to use with an um, an older deaf child, a six, seven year old, who is getting cochlear implants. Um, the one thing across all of the, the five books on deafness that I've got, one thing that's interestingly absent is an under, um, the view of the use of signs. So... But 
but I know that Mr. Yellow, Mellow Likes Yellow is going to be lots of signing with yellow. Um, I can imagine using that a lot to teach the signs for colours along with the words and concepts. So, hmm. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little haul. Um, I wanted to make that as a really nice quick video all in one take and I'm going to post it up. Be um, please like, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, right, thank you and goodbye.